Oh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. It's a wonderful feeling, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a surreal honor. Yeah, yeah, and we're just so grateful. And the fans have been so warm and so open and loving. Yeah, and they've embraced our Elfie and Glinda in a way that there's there are no words. I didn't. I don't know if I expected that kind of reception for them to like welcome us in such a way, and it's been really wonderful. Yeah. Very, I'm very so proud of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I think that's a, one of the things we're proudest of is just yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Being able to move this together. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I think I met John Chu. We had a two and a half hour chat in Belsize Park in London, and I knew within five minutes that this could only go one way in the hands of John Chu. Uh, there's so much sort of love and care, and everyone is a massive fan of the original. Uh, production, but his um, he, yeah his interpretation of some of the most sort of poignant and human themes in this, uh, I thought I think it's just extraordinary, and it's created a cinematic event. Um, and obviously, Wizard of Oz is something that I grew up with, with all generations of my family. So I'm excited to to watch this with them again. And you know, it's a it's a a very special film uh, that everyone can enjoy, and I think that's what we need at the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was you know shot over a week and a half. There are amazing. Uh, the, my my takeaways are watching 300 professional dancers follow your every move is uh, wild and empowering on a very <laughs> uh, nerve-wracking and, uh, and thrilling uh, level. But uh, yeah, Chris Scott, the choreographer, has worked with John Chu for years, and um, and Alice Brooks as well, who is the cinematographer. And so they know how to make they know how to shoot a dance uh, to make it look as exciting as possible. But yeah, I felt sort of sexy, cool, and uh, you know, it's, it's once in a lifetime, isn't it, to be able to do that? Live singing. Live singing, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, warming up in the in the trailer in the morning, but also it's testament to the girls because we know that they can sing and we know that they're extraordinary talents. But the um, the skill to sustain um, to sustain being able to do that 14 hours a day uh, for them for uh, you know up to a year uh, and to have a strike in the middle of it. And as Cynthia reminded us last night. She hadn't filmed Defying Gravity until after the strike. So she was kept on ice for, for that amount of time. But yeah, it was, it's amazing to be around that much talent and that much um, love. And I think everyone just lent in. And if we've done the, uh, the original pro uh, production proud and the fans of the original production uh, proud, then we've, we've, we've done well, I think. Compared to all the movies I've made, and I've, made, I've been lucky enough to make a bunch of them, um, and I've been in some good ones, and I've had some great experiences, this is the cherry on top. It took the cake. But this was uncommon. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, John M. Chu, a spectacular director. It's just spectacular. He's created a Meisterwerk, and this particular movie, Ariana Grande, Cynthia Revo, performances for the ages. They're, they're the all-time greats, uh, musically, you know, cinematically, and theatrically. And Jonathan Bailey and Michelle Yeoh, I, I just was, felt so lucky to be in this movie. I'm just grateful. It was a glorious experience. Well, the Jeff Goldblum Wizard, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's an interesting character. You know, yeah, Frank Morgan, uh, I had in my head too from the beautiful movie and originally I saw, I saw Joel Grey on stage and I adore him. I know him a little bit. I hope to see him tonight, in fact. Uh, then I saw my friend Ben Vereen play it on YouTube. I never saw him on stage. I wish I had. Oh, you know, I just tried to um, uphold the honor and beauty of this show and that part and the greats who have done it before and the greats who will do it after. Uh, John M. Chu uh, helped me do something different for this movie. It's not the man just behind the curtain, but he's got a whole workshop. Yeah. He's a kind of inventor, a Nikola Tesla type. And there's nobody that's, as this movie says, I think, on the show, and the book by Gregory Maguire, nobody's really all good or all bad. We don't know. There, we can always see things from another angle. So anyway, you see things from an angle that allow you to see my hazel, hazel eyes in this. It really is. It's. Um Honestly, it's kind of how I feel on the inside, so it's cool to see it on the outside, you know? I mean, people have loved Wicked for 20 years and loved The Wizard of Oz for eight, eight, 90, 90 years or something, give or take. Um, so, I don't know, it's a beautiful thing to see and it's a beautiful thing to be a part of, to be a part of a movie that hopefully is being embraced by the fandom of Wicked in the same way that, um, that they embraced the Broadway show. And, and I don't know, I'm, I'm part of that fandom, so it's exciting for me. It was really, it was really something. We had, we had time to do some rehearsal, which I think is a real privilege when you're making a film. And it was just so immersive, right? Every set was fully built and beautiful, designed like to like the most minute detail. 
Um, so I don't know, I, I've never experienced anything quite like that. It felt like walking onto the set of Ben-Hur or something. John is not only a visionary director um, and just kind of brilliant, he's also the kindest human and he put together a team of people that are so deeply invested in making something beautiful. Um, and he, I don't know, he just leads with such generosity. I'm, I've learned from him every single second of every single day that I was on set. I'm very grateful for John. Bach is a well-intentioned, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young guy looking for his community, and looking for his space. Um, and he sometimes stumbles and trips on his way. Um, but I do think that, especially in the first movie, he's leading with these good intentions. And it's really exciting to play somebody like that um, and sort of the effects of what happens when you don't necessarily get the thing that you're longing for and how you deal with it. Absolutely never. One of the craziest things is they're both unbelievable vocalists and their voices are so different and then when they sang together they kind of sound like one and it was just like a really beautiful metaphor for the way that they acted too like their their performances as Glenda and Elphaba they're so different and yet they're just an undeniable duo and um, on screen and off it's it's wonderful to witness I, I was lucky enough to be on set um, for a few days of defying gravity and just heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, and also like gives you chills because of the power of their voices. It's just beautiful. So John and I have known each other for 25 years, and the other night we were at USC, and I said, this is complete magic, and he said, no, this was our destiny. And it does feel like a destiny uh, to be here 25 years ago, before there were Hollywood, mus uh, Hollywood musicals were dead, pre-Moulin Rouge, pre-Chicago, and the two of us, we were kids and we had a dream to make musicals and here we are with Wicked. In this case, it took an army to make this movie. We had so many wonderful craftspeople and human beings and storytellers and filmmakers and, and seeing them, uh, many people here tonight from the crew, it's really spectacular. We wanted to make an old Hollywood movie but also make it contemporary. Make an old Hollywood movie for 2024. and. So that was our goal. So we had real sets, 17 stages, that the sets were wall to wall, floor to ceiling, and then a huge, four huge backlots to the size of American football fields. So we had real places to shoot and real places to light and real places for John to be able to create, and we looked 360 degrees all the time. Um, we rolled only on two cameras for most of the movie. There are a few places, Emerald City and Shiz, we used three cameras, but Dancing Through Life was one. This is an insane experience. I mean, being here and being surrounded by so many people that look so incredible, like, it's, go it's gonna be a good night. It was such an incredible experience, like, I I'm sure that all of us are gonna get really emotional throughout the night because it's been such a long but incredible experience. Life-changing, incredible, stunning, gorgeous, and just really nice. Oh, really, as a super fan of Wicked, I think everyone is just going to feel the same way I do, which is really proud. Got out of the car, and everybody was screaming our name, my name, and I heard them screaming when Adina got out, and I cried, because I thought, oh my gosh, they remember. And it's emotional. <laughs> Sorry. I am so glad I'm alive to see it. <laughs> I'm so happy that John Chu was the one they had directed. Um, Cynthia and Ariana are powerful. They are a power couple, and they are going to bring it all the way home. It's a love letter to our show. It's a love letter to what we, what we tried to, you know, implant on Broadway, and I think we did successfully, and they just paid homage and then made it theirs. Everybody has committed. I was getting my nails done this week, and a, just a sweet little random girl I met, she was like, pink and green, and she had each hand, and I thought, man, is it me or is it everywhere? Like, everybody's committing, not just to people on the carpet, but everyone, I love it. It's been a whirlwind, for sure, a journey, but it, it means the absolute world, world to me to be a part of something this, this big and this amazing and so beloved, too. It feels otherworldly, for sure. Like an out-of-body moment and very, very surreal. But I'm so glad and honored to be the one to do that because I didn't have a whole lot of it in general growing up. Um, and so to be a part of that for so many other people out there is so important. It means everything to me. 
Everybody was from Jump, just so welcoming and, and so kind. My first day um, on set or, or just overseas for rehearsals and everything in my green room, Ari had left a, a thing of flowers on my table and Cynthia had um, gifted me these, I forget what they're called, but they're like gummies for your throat, for throat care, which is just so sweet and so thoughtful. So everybody outside of them too has just been lovely. John, just genuinely everybody. We can hope for the best. I, I feel like people are kinder. I like to see the best in people, so hopefully yes. Uh, it's been a great experience. I mean, I started uh, working on this about three years ago when my hair was brown. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's been a, such an incredible experience. This is my first musical. Um, and uh, it's been an incredible experience working with Ariana and Cynthia and John and uh, you know, all the actors. It's been, it's been awesome. Uh, it is. You, I have to be uh, a lot more quiet, <laughs> and uh, I, um, I usually my approach to visual effects is always uh, be completely invisible, so that people really don't know that there is uh, visual effects throughout the whole movie. Um, but uh, I mean, the, the whole idea was to make a delightful picture full of beautiful uh, images. Yeah, very much. I mean, there was some fear there. Uh, we did all the all the uh, transformation for the monkeys, and there was that thing about you know, what do we do? We make here a horror thing, or do we go the other way? And I think uh, we we kind of like went through the middle of it. And I think it's it's photorealistic, but it's not a horror. Film. I was up for the challenge. I mean, you know, when, when I was asked, I mean, it was the opportunity of a, of a lifetime um, to have the opportunity to uh, become a part of the, the uh, Wizard of Oz wicked uh, culture. And uh, I'm just, you know, so grateful that, uh, you know, I was able to do justice to, uh, to the, you know, everyone's uh, hope. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to incorporate as, as many shades of pink as I could. Um, green, I left to uh, the makeup department, uh, but definitely for pink. Well, I mean, Wicked, Wicked has such an amazing fan base, and the ownership is, you know, uh, you know, out of this world. And, you know, I just think that that, you know, speaks to the love that they have for this amazing story and, and everything that's been created before, and then uh, also our film. So I'm really excited about that. My collaboration with John Chu, Chu is, you know, it's been one of the best. I mean, he is an amazing director and so giving, and it's been a delight to collaborate with him. They're all my favorites. <laughs> no, in, indeed. I mean, they're, 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 I cherish all of them and, and hope that everyone else uh, really loves them as well. It's a, yes, but she made it look like it was just going to float across the, uh, the, the set. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have to give it to her. I give it to Cynthia Rivo in how they, uh, they uh, have reimagined these two amazing women. You know, working with John Chu was such a dream. And the cast, I mean, the, the, all the live singing that we had, it was, just, it was just glorious to put it together with such a beautiful orchestra. And um, just everybody was all firing on the top of their game, you know, that's what it felt like. Uh, it takes more planning and a little bit more, more, more thought up front, but until they get on the set and start to actually find out about whether they're able to sing live, and, and with costumes and lighting and all the things that happen, um, it's, uh, it's, it's always a, a, a surprise. This one was a beautiful surprise because it, was, it just came together so fantastically. So yeah, it was a little different. Well, without giving too much away, the end of the movie is pretty spectacular. So once, we get, once they're singing together and we start doing Defying Gravity, there's some magical moments that I get goosebumps now when I watch, having gone through it many, many times. Well, when you've got singers as good as this, honestly, you just get out of the way. I mean, right? You just, what are you going to do? They're, they're just, so you embrace it, you preserve it, and, and uh, give it the best you can. And I'm, I'm very, very proud of this. I mean, it's hard to put into words because it really has been like a spiritual journey with this man. And I think, you know, I've to see his growth, I think, was the most... Pro I mean, I think out of everything that happened how special this movie is, that's probably the most special for me because something changed in him for this film. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't even say that as the like something has changed within me. Like it, I mean, it is that. Like he really did have something 
I saw him like really like grab the importance of this film and put it into his soul and then push it out through this movie. And I've experienced it many, many times that he always has that level of care, but something about, excuse me, something about this one was just special, yeah. A hundred percent. This I think everything was so special. So in, in other movies, everybody's working so hard and they're collaborating, but a lot of it is like existing stuff that you can kind of wrap your head around. This is like, everything's like, Ozzie, you know, so so your brain's like, you know, everything takes the ultimate side of your creativity to just do it justice. And it's also this grand world that we're getting lucky enough to play in, you know, from the Wizard of Oz, you know, all of L. Frank Baum's history, the books, everything that he's like built in, you know, Gregory, it's just been like, and then Steven comes in. I mean, it's just like blows my mind. And Winnie, of course, it's just to be in their company, I think, added something to it, too, is like, OK, we can't let that down. We got to pull up and, and deliver. You know, I, it's hard to say if I have a favorite. That was my first. I did start the whole thing with Dancing Through Life. When John gave me the job, I went, I drove home and I was like, okay, let me start listening to Dancing Through Life because I know that is one of the staple dance numbers in the Broadway show. So, and, and you know, and also Fierro is probably the closest version to me. I get to be me in, in Fierro form, dancing on the, on the, you know, with the books and the things and, and all the little, charms and, and, and gimmicks and things. Um, so that one was definitely very, very special. And then getting Jonathan into the process was incredible because he's such a thoughtful collaborator. You know, it wasn't like, okay, I'm Fiero, I'm here to dance, uh, I'm gonna play this character. This way, it was like, I have very specific ideas and let's find those moments throughout this number. Um, and I love working like that. You know, it really didn't, you would think there was never a time where we're like, I mean, I haven't even thought about that, but that is such a testament to those artists because very, I don't even remember times when we're like, we got to do it again because of the vocals were like off. They were just so on point. Not to say it never happened, but like it, and if it did, it's probably because they just wanted to top themselves and do better. But it just sounded like this incredible display of talent, you know, and, and vocally, even through all the dancing, there was never a moment where like, we can't dance like that because then I can't sing. They always just did it. I mean, they go to it was get incredible. It. It's all about uh, taking what has already been established with the Broadway show and just giving it, just blossoming it bigger, flushing out the characters, flushing out the, the world that they live in. Um, yeah, just making it more real, more visceral. We are so fortunate to have an amazing team that we've worked with on film after film after film, literally for decades, some of them. And so we know and we're doing this especially a specific genre, you know, who's going to be great and who's really going to shine in that genre. Yeah, it's a tight-knit family. We work uh, over and over again with the same people and we have a real good shorthand and we all are just ultimately friends at the end of the day that have the similar sensibilities. And um, it's the same way with working with John Chu. It feels very much like a deep friendship and we're all in this together to, to realize this vision. When the director says we're done, we're done. <laughs> yeah, you have a feeling that like uh, it's a delicate balance. If you keep pushing it any further, you're just gonna start getting in the weeds and breaking it. So you you, you have to have a good uh, a good someone to a uh, producer director to like say enough's enough and we're done. We've nailed it. So it is it is hard. It's a little bit of an out of body experience, but it's it's a really fun experience. I've never been to a big Hollywood movie premiere before, so I'm just enjoying the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel that way. It didn't feel like giving it over. It felt like a wonderful new collaborator who had brilliant ideas, who, of course, has this sensational cinematic imagination. We felt in great hands, but, you know, it was... I, I'm told sometimes if you sell your show to the movies, they thank you and say, go away, and, you know, we'll see you at the premiere, but th it wasn't like that with this. You know, the whole thing was very collaborative all the way through, and John... It's certainly John's vision, and he's certainly, you know, our leader, but we always felt part of the process and listened to, and um, yeah, it was great to work with him. Um, well, you know, as you say, they're world-class voices. Cynthia plays her voice like an instrument. She is a virtuoso, it's the only way I can put it. She has so much control, and she can try all these different things, and you know, we work together on, let's try this, and oh, what if we do that? And she brought so much into it. 
Ariana, the thing that I like so much about uh, what Ariana has done is how I think people are going to be very surprised because there are parts of Ariana's voice that, of course, she's always had and talents and skills she's always had, but she hasn't shown them really before. So I think her fans are in for a surprise and in for a treat. It's really exciting. You know, obviously, countries where they don't see the stage show and places where people, you know, can't get there. Plus, this is a whole other experience, the movie, you know. It's just, I mean, I'm obviously not going to knock the stage show because I think it's marvelous and, you know, uh, uh, I'm very proud of it. But, but this is, you know, a, a, another level of both for the storytelling and the spectacle and the emotion of it. It's, it's very exciting. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And of course, the best crew in the world, which made it look so wonderful. But working with John Chu, Mark Platt, and these amazing artists is breathtaking. No, the no stronger words really for it. So wonderful. Yes. Oh, um, uh, making it John's was very important, and of course, Ariana's and um, Cynthia's as well. But to certainly drawing on history and from our original production of The Wizard of Oz and Wicked, the stage production, taking everything that was wonderful and then adding to that for our bigger world. Green was a <laughs> finding the bespoke green for Cynthia was a wonderful experience, I have to say. But Emerald City was wonderful. Working with Nathan Crowley and um, Paul Taswell, John Chu I've worked with before, so I know how wonderful he is. Yes, yeah, so it took a city, not a village. <laughs> it took the whole of London nearly. So we're going to first off.